Hello everyone. Today we are going to read about the breast pathology. What is a breast? It is a modified sweat gland and here the blood supply you are seeing is coming from the axillary artery to the axillary tail of breast and lateral thoracic artery supplies to the lateral side of the breast and the serratus anterior. Then the medial side of the breast is supplied by the internal thoracic artery and the superior epigastric artery. It extends from the second rib to the third. It extends from the second to the sixth rib and the draining lymph nodes include axillary group of lymph nodes which you are seeing here. Then comes the supraclavicular group of lymph nodes and then comes the internal mammary group of lymph nodes. All these will take the draining lymphatic into the thoracic duct. In carcinoma of the breast, we see enlargement of palpable axillary lymph nodes. Supraclavicular lymph node can be palpable sometimes. Now coming to the histology, we should know there are four terms used in a microscopy of breast. First, lobes. A lobe is nothing but a collection of lobules. So there are at least 20 lobes in whole breast. A lobule, there are many lobules per lobe which, can say, which consist of acini. What is acini? It is a gland. So, a group of cells form a small gland or acinus. Each acinus form a lobule, uh, each multiple acinus, acini form lobules and multiple lobules form lobe. Then there is two types of duct, intralobar, interlobar, so that is inside one lobe or between two lobes. So, these ducts will lead to lacticiferous ducts in the nipple. So what you are seeing here is a single lobe. So each lobe have multiple lobules. So this entire thing is a lobe and this is a single lobule. So here you are seeing each lobule is composed of multiple small rounded glandular structures. Those are nothing but acini. Singular form of acini is acinus. So acinus is composed of glands which are lined by, so this is a closer picture of an acinus. So this consists of glands which are lined by two layers of epithelium. The inner layer of epithelial cells and outer layer of myoepithelial cells. That is surrounded by a pink colored basement membrane. So this is a normal benign gland with round to oval epithelial cells and slightly oval to elongated myoepithelial cells. Now this is a electron microscopy picture of an acinus showing the myoepithelial cells bounding the epithelial cells. Now a breast will have three phases of functioning. Active phase in the active phase, the glands and the stroma will be in 1 is to 1 or 50-50 ratio. So what you are seeing here is a normal gland or a normal lobule consisting of acinus and this entire thing is a lobe and this is a surrounding stroma consisting of fibrous tissue. Okay. Usually fibro adipose tissue will be there. But in active phase what happens, the glands will be increased, okay. Now in lactating phase, mostly glands will be more and stroma will be less. So what you are seeing here in lactating phase is increased number of glands and in between the stroma, the stroma is very less in between each lobule. 
Now there is an atrophic phase where glands will decrease. So what you are seeing here is very few number of tubular structures and few elongated, uh, few elongated dust uh, duct are here present, and then the lobule also is surrounded by atrophic fibrous tissue, and the stroma will be comparatively more. So this is the entire thing. Big thing is the stroma. This will be more. Coming to the hypertrophy, macromastia is a term used for increase in the size of breast. Then degeneration of breast occurs in some trauma or during uh, due to hormonal suppression. And atrophy of the breast occurs with age, mostly in the postmenopausal women or elderly women. We see the atrophy of the breast. So coming to the development, uh, the anomalies of the breast pathology they are divided into four groups developmental degeneration inflammation and neoplasm so what do you mean by developmental anomalies so milk line remnants accessory breast tissue nipple inversion or due to fibrosis and macromastia all comes under developmental anomalies that is they might be present since birth so this is the sites of presence of milk line remnants or accessory breast. It can occur from the axilla into the mid clavicular uh, line. Then the normal spacing is the nipple, and just below the breast in the supragastric le uh, region. Then uh, around the mid thoracic region. Then in the pubic area, and then in the vulvar area okay. so this is how an axillary breast tissue in the axilla looks like so you usually it is diagnosed whenever the female is lactating so you can uh, see the expression of milk through this accessory breast tissue as well now coming to the nipple retraction there is congenital nipple retraction present since birth then acquired nipple retraction occurs whenever there is carcinoma of breast and piercing of the breast. Now coming to the inflammatory conditions of breast. So inflammatory condition is of acute type, periductal type, ductectasia, fat necrosis, lymphocytic inflammation and granulomatous inflammation. So acute inflammation the term used for it is acute mastitis. So here you are seeing a breast which is enlarged and mostly inflamed. The, there is redness and there will be increased temperature of the skin and tenderness. It might be due to blocking of the ducts and super added infection. On microscopically, the section of the breast, so this is a microscopic section showing a part of asini. In this asini it is slightly flattened and the lumen of the asini is filled with debris. So you are seeing a mononuclear macrophages here, the big cells and here you are seeing the multi-lobated small, uh, small pycnotic nuclei of neutrophils. So neutrophils are characteristic of acute inflammation. So here you can see neutrophils in the lumen as well as outside the lumen sometimes. So intraductal and periductal acute inflammatory cells which are mostly neutrophils can be seen in acute mastitis. So if you do a fine needle aspiration cytology and if you do a pap staining then you see neutrophils more clearly. So these are the nothing but the multi segmented poly morphonuclear neutrophils. Now the second uh, inflammatory condition is ductectasia. Okay. It is as such not an inflammatory condition but it can be seen as a consequence of inflammation or it might be a consequence of inflammation. So ductectasia is dilated ducts and it is also called as cystic duct. Mostly it is a component of fibrocystic dis disease of breast. 
here the ducts are dil or the acini or the ducts are dilated and they will be lined by either flattened epithelium okay which you are seeing here is a flattened epithelium or they can be lined by cuboidal epithelium or low columnar epithelium or sometimes the cells might get slightly elongated with apocrine spout, uh, spouting so this spouts of apocrine or the spouts of cytoplasm which you are seeing here are nothing but the spouts so the cytoplasm will become more isnophilic or pink and they will be pouching out pouching of the cytoplasm you see the cells here they will be snouts apocrine snouts will be there that change is called as apocrine change so this cysts and apocrine change and sometimes chronic inflammation fibrosis here you are seeing a better view of apocrine change here in this So here, so it is a feature of fibrocystic disease of breast. So the second type of inflammation, or the th uh, another type of inflammation, is periductal chronic inflammation. So here, there will be a duct. These ducts might uh, might be having sometimes uh, epithelial hyperplasia, or papillomatosis, or some other pathology might be going on and this will be surrounded by chronic inflammatory cells okay can you see there is a slightly bl bluish color dot like things all these are nothing but the lymphocytes around the duct so periductal chronic inflammation and on close power you can see this um, small lymphocytic infiltration inside the ducts Now this is a condition, granulomatous mastitis. So here you are seeing, can you see this entire thing? This is a granuloma. And you are seeing here, what you are seeing here is the pale flipper shaped epithelioid histiocytes. It are mixed with fibrous tissue and small lymphocytes. Can you see dot like structures? So can you see the pale slippery things? Those are nothing but epithelioid histiocytes. So granuloma is a collection of epithelioid histiocytes surrounded by a collar of lymphocytes and fibrous tissue. So here you are seeing the breast, acini of the breast. Okay, so you can identify that this is a mastitis, granulomatous mastitis, which is going on. And then fat necrosis is a condition, very acute condition in the patient, very painful. Where on gross you see a cheesy appearance on the cut section of the breast. So here this, not, this is nothing but the fat necrosis. And uh, it is usually because of some trauma or surgical uh, intervention or otherwise. And uh, microscopically what you see is uh, these are the fat cells. The clear spaces are the nothing but the fat cells. So these fat cells, this is a normal fat cells. But here sometimes uh, these fat cells will dissolve and whatever the fat lipids will elicit a foreign body giant cell reaction here. So what you are seeing here is the 1, 2, 3, 4. So all these are foreign body giant cells. So there is another type of foreign body giant cell reaction going on because of the extra vesated or uh, ruptured fats lipids into the breast tissue so these were the inflammatory condition now coming to the neoplastic condition so as we all know there is a benign condition malignant condition and the borderline conditions are called as pre-malignant conditions the benign conditions are further divided into epithelial and stromal components so benign epithelial diseases will be there benign stromal diseases will be there so uh, what exactly or how exactly do they present? So there will be a mass, there will be a nipple discharge, associated pain may be there or may not be there depending on whether it is benign or malignant. So a uh, mass can be either a incidental finding or it usually if it is less than 2 cm it won't be detectable at all. 
so usually a patient goes for a normal scan and there might be an incidental diagnosis or sometimes mass can be palpable and uh, normal nodularity of the glandular breast will be different and mass will be slightly hard so whether it is well circumscribed or fixed to the tissue underlying tissue the features of the mass will depend based on whether it is benign or malignant so if the patient is of more than 50 years then the likelihood of cancer can be more than 60 percent and if it is less than 40 years then the likelihood of cancer is usually less than 10 percent and uh, usually the patient should undergo mammography screening after the age of 30 years and uh, any densities or calcification should be screened for sometimes the pathology might present as uh, nipple discharge only so uh, if it is we should look for whether it is spontaneous or and unilateral then it is dangerous and uh, there are different types of uh, nipple discharge first is milky you usually we see this in uh, endocrine disorders like prolactinemia and uh, hyperprolactinemia and hypothyroidism and ovulatory cycles oral contraceptive pills administration and drugs like mdopa and phenothiazine and usually milky discharge is not associated with malignancy the serosanguineous discharge is most commonly associated with b9 lesions but bloody is most commonly associated with again b9 lesion and it is characteristically seen in duct papillomas so here what you're seeing is a bloody discharge and a milky discharge pain no pain is also called as mastalgia or mastodynia and uh, the state is uh, the pain can be either cyclical or non-cyclical usually it is because of ruptured cyst injury infection and sometimes without any specific reason only 10 percent of breast carcinoma patient present with pain so if the patient present with a painless swelling irregular swelling painless swelling of very less duration then it is a malignancy mostly so that was the clinical presentation now coming to the pathological aspect so the benign conditions of the breast are divided into benign epithelial and benign stromal neoplasia so benign epithelial neoplasia is usually divided into non-proliferative change proliferative change without atypia and proliferative change with atypia among the non-proliferative epithelium comes the cysts fibrosis and adenosis which is broadly classified as fibrocystic change or fibrocystic disease of breast in the proliferative change without atypia mild epithelial hyperplasia moderate epithelial hyperplasia and florid epithelial hyperplasia will be there that is there will be increase in the number of layers of cells this bilayered epithelium will become stratified now and uh, the main thing is atypia won't be there here atypia what do you mean by atypia atypia is nothing but change in the cellular or nuclear abnormality will be there cellular abnormality means cytoplasmic abnormality means abundant cytoplasm or increased nc ratio nuclear abnormalities mean all the anaplastic features like varying sizes of the nuclei varying shapes the hyperchromatic nuclei prominent nucleoli whatever you're seeing in uh, anaplastic uh, features will be there so depending on whether uh, it is involving uh, like uh, three to five layers or whether it is involving the completely occupying the entire duct it is called as mild moderate or florid then uh, proliferative with atypi is nothing but atypical epithelial hyperplasia atypical epithelial hyperplasia is again divided into atypical ductal and atypical lobular so usually fibrocystic disease is a waste basket term used for benign breast disease characterized by fibrosis cyst inflammation 
and a host of other benign changes. Certain features such as hyperplasia and papillomatosis put in put it in a somewhat higher risk category for future carcinoma. There are three patterns of morphological changes seen in fibrocystic disease that is cyst, fibrosis and adenosis. I have already discussed about cyst. So it is a dilatation. Cyst you can also call as a ductopasia. So it is a dilatation and unfolding of a lobule and uh, multiple uh, cystic lobules coalesce to form larger cyst. Usually that they are lined by either flattened atrophic epithelium or uh, apocrine epithelium. Sometimes there will be hyperplasia leading to papillary projection. Calcification is very common which is also called as milk of cal cal calcium. Coming to, uh, to the gross picture of the cyst, then usually the cyst present as blue colored cystic structure with jelly like appearance that's called as blue dome cyst and microscopically lined by dilated uh, gland will be there lined by flattened cells and the lumen is filled with secretory proteinaceous material and what you're seeing here is a clear space showing a cholesterol crystal can you see this whitish space that is nothing but cholesterol crystals Fibrosis is nothing but whenever there is release of the secretory material into the adjacent stroma, there will be an immune reaction to the material leading to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation further leads to fibrosis. Adenosis is nothing but increased acini per lobule. That is more number of glands, more number of acidus or alveolus per lobule. So all this constitute the fibrocystic change and is included in non-proliferative epithelial disease of breast. Proliferative breast disease without atypia. Rarely they form masses and they are often detected radiographically as densities or calcification. They can also be detected in biopsies. The proliferation of ductal epithelium and stroma without cellular abnormality is suggestive of malignancy. There is 1.5 to 2% risk of developing carcinoma. The entities include florid epithelial hyperplasia, Sclerosing adenosis, complex sclerosing lesion, papillomas, fibroadenomas with complex features. So, what do you mean by epithelial hyperplasia? So, as I said earlier, mild, moderate, and florid hyperplasia are the terms used for epithelial hyperplasia. It is nothing but presence of more than two layers of cells in each asini. More than four layers designate it as moderate to florid. So when they fill the lupin, it can be differentiated from carcinoma in situ by finding fenestration at the periphery of the cellular bars. So what does this statement mean? So this is a florid hyperplasia. How can you say this is a florid? Because more than four cell thickness and it is occluding the lupin of the acidus completely. And this is the fenestration that is the holes, slit like holes will be there at the periphery of the acidus. So this is by the uh, spaces present in the periphery you can say that this is a florid ductal hyperplasia and not ductal carcinoma in situ. I will show you why. So uh, benign hyperplasia is characterized by no necrosis. In ductal carcinoma in situ, you will find necrosis, but here you won't find necrosis. And uh, there will be presence of myoepithelial cells. So here you are seeing that uh, the lining cells, they will be lined by flattened myoepithelial cells. So still it, an atypia won't be there. Then what happens in proliferative breast disease, uh, another uh, proliferative breast disease without ATPI is sclerosing adenosis. 
So adenosis, as I said, is increased in the number of acini per terminal duct. Actually, adenosis is increased in the acini per lobule. But here, sclerosing adenosis occurs, especially in terminal duct. So uh, increase in the per, as, number of acini per terminal duct means for one duct there will be a number of acini. So if you take out a ratio there will be increase in the number of acini. So at least twice the normal of acini, normal number of acini per terminal duct should be there to call it as sclerosing adenosis. So normal lobular arrangement will be maintained. Acini are characterized by dilatation at the periphery of the lobule and uh, here also myoepithelial cells will be present. Sclerosis that is scarring or fibrous tissue formation will be there. Calcifications are present within the lumen of the acini. So what you are seeing here is a dilated duct. Okay, Usually the duct is a terminal duct and so for each duct there will be a number of acini. So what you are seeing here is adenosis. That is increase in the number of acini for each duct. Okay. And usually this dilatation of the uh, ducts will be at the periphery of the lobules. Dilatation of the acini or ducts will be at the periphery of the lobules. Centrally there won't be any as such dilatation. And after dilatation the surrounding structures will be compressed. Okay. So this might... Uh, confuses with malignancy so central dilated uh, glands peripherally compressed glands proliferative breast disease without atypia the third one is complex sclerosing lesion so again a stellate scar with centrally entrapped glands and hyalinized stroma will be there complex sclerosing lesion will include radial scar radial scar related region with uh, sclerosing adenosis and papilloma formation then epithelial hyperplasia so this is a complex sclerosing lesion with a central radial scarring and the dilatation of the ducts or acini will be adjacent to it papilloma is another entity involved in proliferative breast disease without atypia so here what happens you're, what you're seeing here is a collecting duct then comes the lacticiferous sinus then lacticiferous duct so all the tdlu units will drain into a seg subsegmental major duct and the major duct will lead to lacticiferous ducts and uh, then the lacticiferous sinus and collecting duct so these are nothing but multiple branching fibrovascular cores of epithelial with epithelial cells so they the cores will be lined by luminal and myoepithelial cells and growth occurs within a dilated duct so a cystic space will be there and a papilloma will be inside that space epithelial hyperplasia and apocrine metaplasia are frequently seen large duct papillomas are sickle are situated nearer to the nipple Small duct papillomas are multiple and located deeper within the ductal system. So this is what you are seeing is a papilloma of the breast. So a finger like projection will be there in a cystic space. And there will be a fibrovascular core. Now what happens, this is a closer view showing a core. And this core will be lied by double layered epithelium. Okay. So note that no matter how big a male's uh, breast may get. So uh, that was gynecomastia. But here one more point I want to stress at is juvenile papilloma is an entity in which you find these holes. Okay. Here can you see? So this will give it as a Swiss cheese appearance. So that's what I asked uh, earlier in our discussion. Where do you find the Swiss cheese pattern or, or what is the Swiss cheese disease in breast? So it is juvenile papilloma. Gynecomastia is a condition where there will be enlargement of the male breast and usually there will be ducts surrounded by hyalinized tissue, chronic inflammatory cells but there won't be any acini. Then there will be fibrosis in the stroma. 
So, characteristic feature is they will never form a lobule and they will be just blunt ducts. Now, coming to the proliferative breast disease with atypia, it carries 4 to 5 percent of risk for development of breast cancer. This includes atypical ductal hyperplasia, atypical lobular hyperplasia. So, the features of atypia is nothing but loss of stroma between the acidi, Swiss cheese hyperplasia, cribriphobic that is the spacing formation between the or holes formation between the epithelial hyperplasia, the cellular pleomorphism, cellular hyperchromatia, increased or abnormal mitosis, robot bridges that is the epithelial cells will grow from one end of the duct what uh, ed or what circumference of the duct to the other side of the duct or acid eye. The necrosis usually present in either ductal carcinoma in situ or it will be present in comedor carcinoma. So, here you are seeing a normal duct. So, ducts are usually elongated slit like spaces lined by bilayered epithelium and here you are seeing acinus which is a gland like structure with bilayered epithelium and what happens here now a duct so this slit like spaces will convert into this like space so a duct we have seen here that a uh, ductal hyperplasia the slits will be peripheral to the movement of the duct but here what we are seeing in atypical ductal hyperplasia is the holes will be in the center as well. So, there will be peripheral slit and central holes. So, that gives a cookie cutter appearance. So, if you go and browse for cookie cutter, you will get a hole like things. So, that gives a cookie cutter appearance. Now, atypical lobular hyperplasia is the lobules, the acina in the lobules, and entire lobule will show hyperplasia lined by atypical cells. So, that was about benign epithelial disease of breast. Coming to the benign stromal or benign uh, and malignant stromal tumors, the benign stromal tumors are fibroadenoma. B9 phyllodes tumor, besides the fibroadenoma and phyllodes tumor, other B9 tumors can also occur like hemangioma, lipoma, angioma and uh, they can be either myofibroblastoma or they can be anything related to stroma. All the things, all the B9 tumors that can occur in a soft tissue can occur in the breast stroma as well. Then in stromal tumors, there is a pre-malignant condition also which is also called as borderline tumors. The malignant epithelial tumors, the, the malignant stromal tumors are malignant phyllodes tumor. So what is a fibroadenoma? It is a benign biphasic tumor. Why are we saying biphasic is? There will be both hyperplasia of uh, epithelium and stroma. So, the diagram is mislabeled here. Actually, this is a fibroadenoma, well circumscribed lesion, glossy gray white appearance, and here you are seeing nothing but slit like spaces, not cleft, slit like spaces will be there. Okay, can you see the slit here? So, these slit like spaces will be there, they will be very well circumscribed. Uh, here also in mammography, you are seeing very well circumscribed lesion. And they can easily shell out at the surgery. On palpation also, they'll be they'll have this uh, mouse uh, mousey appearance will be there, a moving mouse appearance will be there. That is, they'll be slippery. Then uh, fibroadenoma. Usually, they'll be homogeneous stroma with branching compressed ducts. And if the duct is compressed, or if the compressed glands will be there, it is called as intra canalicular pattern of fibrosis that means this is entire lobule inside the lobule if you're seeing fibrosis 
that will compress the glands so that's called as intracanalicular pattern of fibrosis then if you're seeing dilated glands here this is a picture of intracanalicular pattern so if you're seeing dilated glands that means the fibrosis is not inside the lobule it is outside so that's called as pericanalicular pattern of fibrosis so depending whether the glands are compressed or not we classify it now phyllodes tumor so this is the gross now this is characteristic cleft like spaces present in the phyllodes tumor so all these are like cleft like spaces cleft like spaces this is also a well circumscribed tumor microscopically we see leaf like architecture leaf like architecture of the tumor tissue and here you are seeing the acini the ducts and uh, there will be leaf like projection of the stroma into a cystic space that will be lined by bilayered epithelium but if suppose the stroma keeps increasing and the glands keep this decreasing so these are the glands or ducts but uh, the stroma is more than the ducts so if this stromal expansion associated with atypia so here you're seeing a pointed mitotic figure and you're seeing hyperchromatia and anisonucleosis pleomorphism again uh, again uh, there, there's a there's lot of mitotic figures here here one two three four five so mitotic figure is usually identified by caterpillar like appearance so dark basophilic caterpillar appearance and uh, stromal expansion all these are the features of malignant phyllodes so relative risk for invasive carcinoma based on histological evaluation is non proliferative fibrocystic chain there is no increased risk small simple cyst apocrine metaplasia mild epithelial hyperplasia can be there proliferative fibrocystic changes will have 1.5 to two times the increased risk of cancer that's slightly increased risk so what are the conditions included in proliferative fibrocystic changes moderate to florid hyperplasia sclerosing adenosis intraductal papilloma and fibroadenoma proliferative fibrocystic changes with atypia has an increased risk of 3 to 5 times which is also called as moderate increased risk and it includes atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lobular hyperplasia carcinoma in situ will increase the risk from 8 to 10 times that is high risk and it includes ductal carcinoma in situ and lobular carcinoma so that ends uh, the b9 breast diseases of uh, b9 uh, breast diseases and uh, I, uh, I will continue with the malignant in the second part.